Are you ready for the apocalypse? I know, so dramatic, right? Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Welcome to another episode. This is a Kohler Courage 19 horsepower. It doesn't start. It doesn't crank past the compression stroke, which means that the valves are probably out of whack. I did the valves, but as you guys know with the Kohler Courage heads, the adjustment for this is very, very small, meaning that you can try to tighten it as hard as you can, but it just won't tighten anymore without breaking the nut, which I did on the exhaust valve. The intake looks like I corrected it, but basically it's from use from many years of uh, this engine running that from the heat and the pounding of the uh, rods, that the rod may be just a smidgen shorter than before from all the use or the expansion of the metal or the bending of the uh, rocker arms. It could be a combination of all of that. But uh, the exhaust valve is, the adjustment is at the tightest it can be. I actually broke the top of the nut, so it's stuck there, but it's the tightest it can be. And there's still about 20 thousandths of an inch gap. So that could be the issue. I have another head that I could try, but my main concern right now is the starter motor for this engine. Uh, when you put power to it, it almost turns without grabbing, grabbing onto the Bendix gear, the pinion. I'll show you what it does right now. So I've got direct power directly to the starter, okay? Watch what it does. Well, it doesn't do anything. Ooh. There we go. So it engages, but it spins like 20 revolutions before it actually grips onto the Bendix. See what I'm saying? It's spinning, but that's not really turning. Ooh, that's actually the most I've ever seen it turn, um, which maybe the intake adjustment uh, on the valves worked pretty well. So now that it does spin, so I'm pretty sure that uh, the ACR or automatic compression release on the left cam, on the right cam is not broken because it does seem like it turns. It's just a matter of the starter spinning, pre-spinning before it actually grips onto the uh, Bendix. And as you can see, it gets stuck. See, like that, see? It's not moving, and now it's moving. So it's starting to smoke a little bit. I wanna take the Bendix off that motor, the starter motor, and see what we can find in there that's causing it to slip. So we'll disconnect that. Two 10 millimeter bolts, and it's not hot. It's a little warm. Very easy to remove, that's it. And this is the starter. It's from Johnson Electric. I haven't seen any other manufacturer of this other than Johnson Electric. This is like a generation one or two because of this um, plastic end piece over here. The newer generation three or fours is this long black cover that goes up to here, like a nipple. But anyway, we're gonna, I'm gonna remove this top part here and see why, because the motor seems like it, you know, spins when you have power to it, but it just doesn't turn this pinion when you want it to. It slips a little bit and then eventually grips on. See how you turn it, but the motor's not turning? It's slipping, and now it turns. So looking at it from the top, inside the shaft, there's a groove on the axle on the shaft, and there's a 
C-clip that goes into it that holds this part on there. I'm going to use a pick and try to pick that C-clip out of the groove so this can be removed. As you can see, just testing it here, it's very responsive and it seems to work well when it's not under load. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the internals of the motor. It seems to power on and rotate just fine. It's just that when this Bendix gear gets a load of the flywheel teeth, it slips until it makes enough traction to grip and then eventually turn it with the power that it's intended. But I'm having a difficult time retrieving the C-clip out of that groove. This part needs to come down, otherwise there's no way you're gonna be able to get that clip out. So I basically just manhandled it. I just went and I pushed this down. It's a little rusty here on that shaft, see? But this black part, when you manhandle it, just push right down. As you can see, here's the C-clip on here. I'm gonna to try to pry this off and clean this shaft a little bit because it is a little rusty. Maybe that's cause of it, because this grips it. I'm not sure, but we'll find out. Gonna have to bend it and then bend it back. Definitely hurt yourself doing this if you're not careful. Just jab this right into your hand because of all the pressure you're putting onto it. One slip and this screwdriver goes into your hand. Trust me, I've done it before. There it is. There's the clip right there. You can bend it back to make it tighter when you put it back on. That sucked getting it off. All right, so it's spring-loaded, so I have to be careful not to let things fly. So it's this thing off. I'm going to do the orientation correctly because the bottom part, the lip, is on the bottom. This one actually has like a millimeter. So should I put it this way? No, I'll put it on the way it comes out. Then you have a spring. Now you have this doohickey there. Then you have this pinion or Bendix gear. Here's look like it's in good shape. Here's the bottom part of it. This is rubber. This is smooth but rubbery. I saw a video where they said that it's the material inside that doesn't grip anymore and you have to spray it with like this bed liner stuff. Ooh. There's a washer in here. I wonder if I could take this rubber off. It's the first time I'm taking apart a uh, Cooler Courage starter. I've taken apart um, the other ones for Briggs. Oh, there's two washers. I don't know. 
I'm gonna put this back in. I don't think it makes any difference. I'm trying to figure out the material that they were talking about though, because this is rubber. Here's the starter itself. This is smooth. It does turn. When it grips onto the threads and you're turning it clockwise, it does turn and move upward. There we go. See? There we go. Just like that. Hope this comes off. Look. So there's a thread in there. This is oily metal. This is also oily, and this does not spin. Yeah, this is part of the, well, maybe it's not. Doesn't seem to turn well. Is that part of the housing of the motor? So looking at the mating surface between this, it goes in there, and this, if this was greasy, meaning this is rubber, and this was greasy, that would cause the slip. So if I just clean this rubber surface here, and this part here, it should grip pretty well. But it was pretty greasy. Maybe this turns fast, and then eventually when the friction takes the greasiness away it'll then grip and turn so I think if I just clean this surface and this surface it'll be okay just gonna take some carb cleaner spray it on these two surfaces there the part that both grips wipe it clean so I just clean the surface of this and this and actually now this rubber stuff looks like it's more grippy <laughs> if that's a word so clean rubber dry not greasy will grip this smooth clean surface now and maybe that was what was causing the slippage because normally if you know you have a starter that you know it's not really working right the next uh, thing you think of immediately is to shoot some penetrating oil or oil or grease it you know and then that eventually after using it for a bit it the heat of the motor melts that grease or lubricant and settles into this area and if this the main purpose of this is to turn and this main purpose is to grip this plate you're going to get slippage and this is not going to turn so now that these both the both these surfaces are clean I mean, I'm thinking this is the reason why. So this just pops back on here. Look, just, it just falls on there, right? You have the two rings, uh, the two washers that are in there. I didn't touch it, but I cleaned the surface. I'm just gonna plop that on there. And yes, I feel that that rubber thing is touching that disc and it is turning. Okay, I'm just trying it. I'm gonna put everything back. Uh, I had this in the order that it came off, so it would be this. And there's the spring. Then there's this, pushes down the spring. And the pain in the balls would be the C-clip here, which I'm going to push in some more to give it some more tension and just pop it on. Hopefully it'll work. 
Got the seed clip in between here. I'm just going to crimp a little bit. That's it. Now to put this on, push that down. And you're not going to be able to... Crap. Where'd it go? All right, I found it. So you're not going to be able to get it on like that. So usually with the Briggs ones, you just smack it on. So I'm going to get like this bit that fits right over, that fits right over this, right? But it doesn't fit over this. Yeah, that worked. See, clip is on there. So now that clip won't come out because this thing is spring loaded upwards, keeping it in. All right, well, now I'm going to reinstall this and see if it, does, it still slips. And we'll be able to tell if it slips or not immediately because you'll hear the motor and this won't be turning. <laughs> now, it's kind of a bad design, you know, because it's all dependent on how clean that disc is. All right, let's see if it works better. I'm gonna turn on my thing and hold it with my hand. Yeah, no slipping. Awesome, that worked, fantastic. And while we're at it, it seems like the valves are working fine too. You know what I mean? So watch, look at the valves. We are turning and cranking the flywheel and it is getting past the compression stroke with the spark plug in it. Well, if you had a strong enough battery, we've been using this battery for a while, but as you guys saw before, it was turning. I mean, I think it turns. We, we had numerous cranks before. You just need strong current. And we've been using this jumper for a bit. And it's below 12 volts now. So I'm going to put this valve cover back on again. Uh, I think we, you know, that little bit of adjustment on this intake valve worked. The exhaust is still off by a lot. But obviously, it, it, as long as it turns, it's fine. Also, I'm going to clean up these wires here. They've been chewed by some mice. <laughs> So I've replaced the muffler onto the bottom two bolts of the valve cover. Replace the valve cover, torque them down. And looking through it, I was just about to put a, some electric tape over this frayed area here for the stator. 
when I looked at where the crack was, the typical crack on these Kohler courages, pretty good one. You notice one thing here? That's right. The bolt has been broken on this one, which is the reason why this one vibrates. Wasn't There's no bolt there, so it vibrates and cracks. That's where maybe the oil is coming from. So how am I going to remove that stud in there? That's going to have to wait for the next episode. But as you can see, um, these all have bolts that go around it. And you're just missing this one right there. And that was the reason for the crack. Because that's typical of these engines is that these bolts... They vibrate free and loose, and then you get the crack there, and these back out so much that they hit the flywheel teeth as it's running, shear them off completely, and then you have loss of oil through the sump cover, and then the lack of oil causes it to uh, seize and then blow the connecting rod. So that's what happens with these engines. Very typical. I think it's the design of these uh these bolts, you need to put Loctite on them and really torque them down tight. But uh, I think if you want this thing to run right, uh, you're going to have to remove the whole sump, the flywheel, the sump, all that, uh, and get on the inside there, clean it out, and JB weld the crack from the inside as well as the outside. For me, though, I think what I'm going to try to do is try to extract this bolt and try to shove another bolt in there so that this part will be tight and tight enough that I could just clean this area with uh, carb spray and everything and just see if I can JB weld just the outside and we'll give it a try. If not, we'll take it all apart and JB weld the inside. It's a work in progress. So today we showed you how to um, prevent a Kohler Courage starter motor from slipping. Just have to clean those two uh, surface areas where they grip each other. And it's not a gear or anything, it's just smooth. The smoother and drier and cleaner that is, it'll mate together, grip with the rubber surface, and turn the Bendix gear. As simple as that. It was a little bit, you know, involved when you had to get that C-clip on the groove. But, uh... My starter doesn't slip anymore, and also it does crank the flywheel past the uh, compression stroke. And uh, so, I mean, I just have to extract this bolt, JB weld that crack, fill it up with some oil. We can give it a try. We'll put it onto this tractor and see if we have an engine for it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. next time on Mowers and Blowers.